verse 41. Matthew 26, verse 41. Jesus said to his disciples, When they were asleep, he found them asleep, and he asked them, Could you not watch with me one hour? And then verse 49. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus said to his disciples that they, that they have to watch and pray. And we are His disciples. We have to learn to pray and to watch. I believe that a great part of watching is fasting. We as Christians have to learn how to fast and how to pray. Many times the Lord can move through fasting and prayer. And you can see it in the Bible. Every time there is a problem, the people of God start fasting. During the time of Esther, when there was a plan the Jews to be destroyed as a nation, Esther announced three days fast. And during these three days of fasting, the Lord delivered the whole nation from destruction and gave complete victory. You see what a powerful weapon is fasting. And then you remember during the time of Jonah when the Lord sent Jonah to Nineveh and he said in 40 days Nineveh will be destroyed. And it was a prophecy. In 40 days, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. This is one of the prophecy, prophecies that didn't happen. Because the people of Israel repented and they fasted. And through repentance and fasting, Nineveh came back to the Lord and the Lord had mercy on this great city. And here Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 26 verse 41, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The tempter is the devil. He comes to every one of us with temptations. And the temptations of our time are stronger than the temptations in the times past times. There are temptations everywhere in internet television, advertisement, in every place there is temptation. And if we have to overcome the temptation, the temptations, we have to learn how to fast and how to pray. Because in uh, Matthew chapter 4, 
and Luke chapter 4. Jesus Christ entered into 40 days fast and uh, during these 40 days the devil came to him. Normally we think that during the time of fasting God has to come to us and God has to speak to us. But during the time of fasting the devil came to Jesus and the devil spoke to Jesus. He tempted him with his words. And uh, the Bible says the tempter came to him. I believe that in German also the, the same word is there in German. The devil is called the tempter. He came to tempt Jesus. Jesus was fasting and praying and he was fighting the devil with the weapon of the Word of God. So this is wonderful time of uh, prayer, fasting and thinking upon the Word of God. And in this way Christians become strong and Christians overcome temptation through the weapons of light, of light, fasting, prayer, the word of God. Moreover, Jesus said the spirit is willing or the spirit is strong but the flesh is weak. Our flesh is weak. If we walk in the flesh, we are weak. If we walk in the spirit, we are strong. That's why we have to learn how to use the weapons of the spirit. The weapons of light. Because through the weapons of the spirit, we can overcome the devil and his temptations. But when we walk in the flesh, then we are overcome by the devil. That's why we have to learn how to walk in the spirit. Jesus said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. This doesn't mean that the temptation will not come. The tempter who is the devil came even to Jesus. And the temptation came to Jesus. And the temptation will come to every one of us. There is no question about it. When the temptation comes, this doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we are we have sinned. The temptation is not sin. When we agree with the temptation, then we sin to God. When the temptation comes, it is the devil coming and speaking to us. The devil driving us to, do, to, to sin, to do sin. But we can say yes or we can say no. And the Bible says in the, in the book of James, Jacob, in the book of James, in German I believe it is Jakob. Jakobus, yeah. In the book of Jacob, Jakobus, Jesus said in the... In the uh, fourth chapter obey God it is somewhere about verse 6, 7 verse 7 obey God 
resist the devil and he will flee from you. What verse is there? Obey God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we have to obey God. To obey the word of God. But we have to resist the devil and his temptations. And then the devil will flee, will escape from us in a terror, with great fear, is going to escape from us. That's why we have to learn how to obey God and His Word and how to resist the devil and his temptations. But I want to show you something more in this chapter. This is very interesting chapter and you know it's the chapter when Judas betrayed Jesus. And uh, when the soldiers came and wanted to take Jesus, in verse 51, Matthew 26, 51, the soldiers came and wanted to take 51. The soldiers came and wanted to take Jesus. And verse 51 says, One of them which were with Jesus, this was Peter of course we know, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote of his ear. So you see Peter is a warrior. <laughs> Peter is a soldat, <laughs> soldat, warrior. He took the sword and he decided to cut the throat of the servant, you know, of the uh, of the servant there, yeah, of the of the of the warrior, of the soldier, but he couldn't cut the throat, he could cut only the ear. And look what Jesus said. Jesus said in verse 52, put up again your sword in his place. For all day that take a sword shall perish with the sword. Jesus said to Peter, you don't need this sword. You do, not, you do not need to fight in the flesh. You do not need to kill people in order to protect Jesus. Put your sword in its place because everybody who takes a sword shall perish with the sword. This means that the people that kill other people, people that kill other people, with swords, they will die by sword. What we sow is what we reap. We have to learn how to fight in the spirit, not in the flesh. There are religions today that want to cut heads, that want to kill by natural weapons, but it is not our religion. Our faith and religion 
is not like this. We want to save people, we want to give life, we want to heal, we want to deliver, we want to bless, we want to raise the dead. This is Christianity. Jesus died and was raised from the dead that we all can be raised from the dead and have eternal life and that we can help others to receive the gift of eternal life. So, the, our faith is not faith of death but it is faith of life. Faith of salvation. <coughs> our Lord is not the Lord of death and killing. Our Lord is the Lord of life and resurrection. Lord of salvation. Lord of healing and deliverance. Lord of blessings. This is Lord Jesus. So he said to Peter, don't protect me by a sword. And we have not to protect Jesus Christ by natural means and natural weapons. He doesn't need our protection. We need his protection. Okay. So, verse 53 is very important. Jesus said, <laughs> Jesus said to Peter, moreover, Jesus said to Peter, Do you think that I cannot pray now to my Father and He shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Verse 54 But how then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Now Jesus said to Peter Everything is under control. He said, if I do not die, how the scriptures will be fulfilled? Because all the prophecies show that the Messiah must suffer from the sins, for the sins of the world. And the Messiah has to die for the sins of the world. And because he died, he can be raised from the dead. If he didn't die, how could he be raised from the dead? So he had to die for our sins. And he had to be raised from the dead. And this is all prophetic. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. And Jesus said, I came here on earth in order to die for you. Now, so that's why he said, I am going to die for this reason. Not because they come to kill me, but because I give my life for the world to be saved. There is difference between somebody being killed and Jesus who came on earth with the purpose to die for the mankind that the mankind may be saved okay and now Jesus said do you think that I cannot pray now to my father he said I could pray to my father. Peter came with sword. Jesus said, I could pray. I don't want to fight with swords. I don't want to fight with natural weapons. I can fight with spiritual weapons. And this spiritual weapon is prayer. I could pray now to my father. And he could now, presently, give me more than 12 
legions of angels. The Father could send him more than 12 legions of angels. The Father could send him angels. Why? Because angels are warrior spirits. He said legions. Legion is an army. And you remember? One man had a legion of demons in himself. And when these demons came out, they killed 2,000 swines, 2,000 pigs. Schweine. 2,000. This means that for every swine, there was at least one demon. This is simple mathematics. And this makes that the legion is at least 2,000 people. Some say that the legion is 6,000. The, Roman, the Romans legions were 6,000 people, which makes, makes three demons per swine, per pig. Or some say that the legion is 10,000 people. If it is so, then there are five demons for each pig, for each swine. But anyway, at least the legion is at least 2,000 2, people. And you see here, we take it from the Bible, you see. It is not less than 2,000. Because there was not one pig that was empty without a demon. For every swine there, is, there was a demon. 2,000 demons, 2,000 swine. And now, if one legion is only 2,000 angels, 12, 12 legions makes at least 24 thousand twenty four thousand angels and Jesus said I could pray to God to my father and he could send me more than twenty five twenty four thousand angels what can we say about this actually he said if it was not prophesied that I have to die when they come to fight with me, I could pray my father and he could send the, the angels and they, could, and they could fight the battle with, all these, uh, with all, all these soldiers that come against me. Of course, the same happened with Elisha. Uh, 2 Kings verse six, uh, chapter 6. You remember I have preached about it. 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse 16, when, Eli when, when the city was surrounded by the Syrian army, a great army, then Elisha prayed for his servant, Lord open his eyes, and his eyes were opened, and he saw, yeah, and he saw <laughs> and he saw chariots and horsemen of fire all around Elisha. And when Elisha prayed, this army fought with the enemy and the enemy was blinded. The same thing could 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 do Jesus. But he didn't do that because he had to die. He wanted to give his life. But he said, I could pray to my father now and he could now give me more than 12 legions of angels. Between 24,000 and 120,000 angels to come to help Jesus in this battle.
And this is powerful. And if you see, if you see, I, I, I have to preach it, but it, I, in Isaiah 36 and 37, and in 2 Kings 18 and 19, and in 2 Chronicles 32, it is the same story in the Bible three times appears. Hezekiah, the king, who was attacked by the Syrian king, the king of Syria, uh, the king of Assyria. And uh, the Bible says that when Isaiah, the prophet, and uh, King Hezekiah prayed together, the Lord sent an angel who killed 185,000 people. It is very encouraging. The Lord sent one angel. And this one angel, a, angel didn't kill one people, one person, or 185. He killed 185,000 people. Only one angel. Pardon? It is written. Ah, how he, ah, how he killed the people. You can read the three passages. I can give you the three passages. You can read and see how how he killed them. But uh, Isaiah 33 and uh, Isaiah 36 and 37. Second Kings 18 and 19. And Second Chronicles 32. Of course, it can be with uh, a sickness. It can be a different. The Lord knows how to do it. I, I don't know exactly what He did. But the thing is that this angel succeeded with hundred eighty-five thousand, and not only this. He killed these people and in one of the places it says that this was the captains. So if this was only the commanders, the captains, then the army was very big. It was probably at least one or two million people army. And uh, when this happened, the king came back to Assyria in shame and when he entered into the temple of his God to worship his God then his two sons killed him with a sword and the third son became a king in his place so it was complete victory Anyway, you see what is happening when people start fighting spiritual battle and not battle in the flesh. Because Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says to us that our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our war is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual identities. And we have to know how to use the spiritual weapons. That's why Jesus said to Peter, don't use natural sword. Because if you use sword to fight, you will die of sword. But you have to use the spiritual weapons like prayer like fasting like the sword of the spirit the word of god and jesus said and then my father is going to send legions of angels 
and the word legions speaks about an army. This means that the angels are warriors. They are soldiers. They know how to fight. And their work is to fight with the enemy. So we have to know how to use and how to activate the angelic hosts to fight our battles. You remember Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We have to learn how to bind the demons, the spiritual powers. We have to learn how to, how, how to bind them. And we have to learn how to lose the angelic powers through prayer, through fasting and through the word. We have to learn how to do it. I will show you that really spirits can be bound. Do you want to see some spirit? I, I just looked in the Bible Nesson, uh, today and I saw one spirit that was bound in chains. If you go to Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, you will see in verse, in verse 1, Offenbarung 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. You see how powerful the angel can be. One angel of the Lord with one chain will succeed to bind Satan himself into the pit, into the bottomless pit for thousand years. He will lock him there during the thousand, during the millennium, the reign of Christ for thousand years on this earth. But he had a chain, and this is a spiritual chain. He binds spirit. Welcome. He binds spirit. The devil is a spirit. He binds him with a spiritual chain. One angel. What a power. This is not God. This is angel of God doing this job. Praise the Lord. How mighty are the angels of God. Mightier than the devil himself. Hallelujah. And I want to show you another place where we can bind and loose. And it is in uh, Psalm <clears throat> 149. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. 
and uh, it is in verse 8 to bind kings with chains and nobles with feathers of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise you the Lord this honor this privilege all the saints have this privilege every one of us has this privilege what it is to bind with chains of iron the kings the spiritual powers of darkness with spiritual chains this privilege we have and we have to learn how to do it by prayer by fasting by using the sword of the spirit because Jesus said whatever you bind to bind to on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven he gave us the keys he gave us the authority against the powers of darkness so we see the example of Jesus Christ in Matthew 26 53 he said that he could pray to the Father now and the Father now could give him more than 12 legions of angels they are spirits so we need spiritual help against spiritual enemy our enemy is not flesh and blood Ephesians 6 12 says we fight not against flesh and blood our enemy is not flesh and blood our enemy is spirit so we need spiritual weapons and spiritual army more are they that are with us than they that are with the enemy there are more angels with us than all the demons and all the fallen angels of the devil there are more angels at our disposal than all the demonic powers of hell and if we learn how to activate the the ministering spirits of God in prayer in uh, fasting in using the Word of God then we can do great things for the Lord. I know you remember uh, Psalm 103 verse 20. The Bible says in this Psalm that uh, the angels are mighty in power. It says, bless the Lord, all you angels, mighty in power who do the word listening to his voice so how the angels operate they are mighty in power but in order to operate they need the word of God in our mouths when we speak the word of God in faith when we pray the word of God when we fast, then the angels are activated. We have to believe in the invisible army. And most of all, in the king of kings and the great general of the army of God called Jesus Christ. Whose name, who is seated on the white horse and his name is the word of God. And behind him, all the angelic powers, and he sends them to help us, to fight our battles, 
to minister to us.